Welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen. It's really two programmes in one. This is a series that appeals to your creative side. Food that is sumptuous stuff. How could that be? Uh, this is a programme about people who want to eat healthy and reduce calories. Actually, it's about food with an aromatic quality that fills the nose. Oh, sure. But it's also about keeping my arteries clean by reducing fat. But it doesn't mean a thing if the food isn't rich and colourful. Maximise the flavour. OK, but I must have healthy food that I can cook in minutes. I must minimise the risk. So welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen, where we get our heads together just for you. And it, it really is just for you. That's the whole purpose for this whole, you know, bit of effort that we do. Um, there'll be a basic technique, if you haven't watched this before, and I'll wrap a little recipe around that, and then we go on from that to a major, big, wonderful, well, it's not that not that big, really. Um, a nice dish where I actually use the basic technique and then kind of springboard into using it for you know, those purposes. Now, today, I, I, I'm fascinated by this particular subject. It's really when you've got um, a piece of meat like this, and people say to me, Graham, what would you do to do the greatest difference to my diet, my way of life, my health, you know, row of risk, etc.? What would you do? And I said, well, what you could do, says me having taken blue, I mean, you know, you've never seen a piece of blue meat before, but anyway, uh, what I would do, I'd say, cut that in half, all right? Cut the piece of meat in half. If you normally put six ounces of meat, then you actually cut it in half, put three ounces. And add to that some grains or rice or seeds, some means or beans, some means of adding on the rest of the plate, something that's really attractive that you like, that, know, you, that you know that doesn't have fat in it, all right? So halve what you know does have fat in it and add the rest of the things you like which doesn't have fat in it. Okay, so that's what this is today. It's an extender. It just means taking a little bit of protein and making it into a marvelous dish. And I'm going to do that first of all with a time-honored idea with a little chicken and make a pilaf, all right, with rice. Come on, I'll show you how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> I've got lots to do, so off we go. Um, one uh, teaspoonful, just, and you, you might have noticed I use so little oil and fats, it's really not necessary to sort of throw it in. Um, and uh, wind the heat up underneath that, and I've got just here um, eight ounces of chicken. Now, the chicken is, is off one side uh, of a bird. Now, I mean, I don't want to make a fetish out of this, but you'll notice there's dark meat there and white meat as well. And whilst it's cooking, let me show you. If you take um, a regular chicken, or even an irregular chicken, I suppose, and cut through the breast <coughs> and carve the knife down so that you take the breast off, you've got this as breast meat, and, of course, you've got this as the, as the leg meat. Now that, when you trim it all off, <coughs> is eight ounces. From a three and a half pound bird, you get about, you know, one pound of meat. So what I'm going to do is instead of uh, using the one bird for four people, I'm going to use half the bird for four people, thereby I've halved the amount of food which could have any fat in it at all. Right, put that to one side. By the way, the trimming of the <coughs> fat content is this. So all of that that could have gone into a dish if you were roasting it or casseroling it and leaving the skin on, we've got rid of that as well. So that's an added pus factor. All right, Th this is stirred around. So um, you, you actually need to cook this for about five to six minutes. And in five or six minutes' time, the protein will coagulate through the internal temperatures about 165, and you've done it. <coughs> Must go above 140 in order to be able to kill any potential little lurky germs that, uh, you know, you don't really want to have. All right, let me show you the onion. Um, in this case, uh, the onion is simply cut into small dice. And I I'd like to make a point whilst I'm doing this for you. You just cut it down there, and it's got the natural, you know, the natural way that an onion goes is this way. So when you cut down across the leaves of the onion, then all you have to do is cut it that way, and you've got nice little dice. You see, I think that um, a lot of people in 
in all, you know, have been sold a, a, a strange statement, which is make <coughs> as much time as you possibly can for yourself by using a lot of ingredients that don't require any time or skill or anything at all, such as uh, dried onion flakes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, I'm sure that if I was north of Alaska somewhere and, you know, the huskies had gone on strike, um, it might be a reason for actually doing this. Keep stirring the chicken, by the way, and keep it going. But I've tried using this, and I'm sorry, and if you make it, I apologize if I sound as if I'm critical, but um, I don't like it. I like to be able to take a knife and about 30 seconds and actually come up with real onion. It really makes a lot of difference. All right, this chicken, let's make that assumption for a moment. That's gone through the six minutes so I can get it out of the pan. And this is one of the pans that I have that don't have funny handles to hang on to, so I have to hang on to it with that. Sw swirl it all round and then out onto the plate. Good. Now I've got the sort of the meat juices left behind here and I don't want to waste those at all. Um, just put just another, just a little soupçon of oil in there so as to get the natural volatile oils of the onion out and just shoot those in on top. And I need a whole large onion in the dish, so there's the other side. I'm going to bore you with the other bit. And that is going. Now, I'm going to just throw into, to cook at the same time as the onions, this Louisiana long grain rice. And that's, that's an, any long grain rice will do, really. And um, just stir it in so that what juices there are from the chicken and that oil and now just coating it and the onion can cook through at the same time as beginning to flavor the rice. Lovely. This is a great sort of basic pilaf idea. Okay, and you can use it so many different things. Here's the rice. Now, the rice could be the long grain rice that I showed you before, or it could be a brown rice, in which case you'd have to cook it for almost twice as long. But try and avoid this rice here. Now, this rice has its own uses, but this is a little fat rice called pearl rice, if you like, or sticky rice or sweet rice. That one doesn't do a very good pilaf, so that's why I chose that one. All right, when this is just tossed around a little bit and you start to smell it sort of coming, wafting up there, then you get good chicken stock. Now, always twice the amount of stock than you have rice, twice. So get two cups of rice in there, four cups of stock. Just throw it in and stir it all around. Just swill it around and get any sort of errant little rice grains uh, around the top. Whip, whip that down into it. That's a lovely sound. <laughs> Let's get started. Um, a, little, a little herb on, onto there. This herb is tarragon. And um, if you look in, in recipes uh, for chicken, you'll find that tarragon, French tarragon, occurs a great deal. A little spiky, um, marvelous, wonderful herb. Um, drop that down on the top. Just let it lie there. It will, it will diffuse its herbal essence throughout. And the bay leaf, just float that on the top as well. I'll show you the reason for floating that in just a sec. Okay, so time to get into the oven. Um, now, the oven should be set at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which, as we all know, is 230 degrees centigrade. Yes? Oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> and just before you rush for the oven, a little freshly ground salt. Now, a little. Um, you've actually got to keep on doing this until you get through a quarter of a teaspoonful. That's what I want. I want a full quarter teaspoonful because there is such a lot of rice there that um, and it, by the way, it's a real tummy full. It's a real gut stretcher, this one, in terms of the amount of, uh, uh, of um, rice that we've got in. Okay, so pop that up into the top oven there. Don't, don't put a lid on it, just let it go. 20 minutes, that's all it takes. And hee, ready. And just pull it out from the bottom, push it through. And don't forget, you've got to learn the backward um, Oven closed. You don't have to, of course, but if you've got a, it's a little hard if you've got a higher one than that. Here, this is the reason why I left the herbs right on the top like so, all right? so that they can just be pulled out very easily. Then, all you really need to do is to get the chicken, which, as you know, is cooked, and drop that down onto the surface. And then, I've got a most 
fantastic thing that happens here. Because you've got the chicken, which is nice and juicy, a, a nice, also a juicy thing you can do is to cut in the sort of traditional shape that I like to cut things, um, a, a one-inch wide piece of mushroom, and drop those in two. And I've got eight ounces of mushrooms there. And if you stir that in, always be sure to hang on to it. Look, look, oh, see what's happened, how the rice has, it, it, how it's completely absorbed all the stock. And now what I'm doing, I'm stirring all of that in together. And I've got four green onions, you know, spring onions, these little fellas here. Four of those. And just drop that into the top and stir that around. And that's got to go back in the oven just for five minutes just to be able to reheat the chicken and get it sort of going nicely. Oh, ha! No, I should have left the oven door open. No, there we go, once again. Just pop it back in and same heat and just let it go in. Now, over here, some Swiss chard and uh, drop that into the top. It, it hardly takes any time at all to get through. This is Swiss chard, by the way. If you haven't seen it um, around, it's a magnificent broad green leaf with a fabulous red stripe through it. And that's very finely sliced um, so that, you know, it, it, it looks just like this, uh, tremendously fine. And on top of that, just a little balsamic vinegar. Now, balsamic vinegar, look, look, have you ever seen vinegar that deep in color? This is brewed for as much as 10 years in different kinds of um, oak and, and uh, juniper and, oh gosh, I forget all the different kinds of different wood barrels that it's put into. And it's done in Modena in Italy. That's the genuine one. And look for it as a genuine product. And you have the most exciting little kind of wreath that you can ever imagine when you serve this up. All right. Quick stuff. Um, out from the oven, uh, having heated up. And that, actually, though you don't cook the uh, mushrooms in any way, what, what, has, what happens is extraordinary. The heat of the rice actually makes this incredible combination come alive. Now look, you see, there, there is, and this is four, por you know, four portions. Come on, I've got to keep on adding it. This, as I told you, was a bellyful. And then you take the, the, the uh, Swiss chard and you pile it around the side. <laughs> come on, Graham. And it, it's got that, that um, balsamic vinegar in it which gives it that crisp, aromatic sort of um, flavor, a little acidic thing. Gorgeous. Looks great. Look, come on, I'll show you the numbers. And the smell is that That's another, that aroma that comes up is fabulous. I'll tell you what I've done. I've compared this to the classic, um, you know, pilaf idea. Remember what I did? Halve the amount of meat and then fill the plate with, with the extenders, with the grains, all right? And so this is what happens when you do that. From 828 calories, it goes zing down to 406. And remember what a plateful that is. So in 28 grams of, um, of fat there comes down to only five with one from saturated, which is super stuff. So I get a 10% of calories from fat. And that's the kind of thing I'm trying to aim for when I really feel as if I've succeeded. And then 31 milligrams of cholesterol, good stuff. 347 uh, coming down on sodium, and 5 is, of course, because it's compared to the rice in the pilaf, you know, and that's the way it is. Okay, so now let's see whether th th there's a large hunk of. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is one of my favorite moments of my whole life is to be able to eat. Of course, I like cooking for you, too. Mm, the combination between the two is just fantastic. Mm. We halve the risk and we've doubled the amount of pleasure. And that's the whole Minimax idea. Okay. So, as you know, <coughs> we're going to try and springboard uh, with this one. And don't forget the springboard, by the way. Now, my springboard is going to be to take that basic idea with the extender and I'm going to take some beef and some quinoa, which is a very unusual herb which grows in the high Andes. 
and, uh, and put that together for a startling new dish, which is one of the best dishes I've ever made. Okay, come on. Right, now, um, what I'm going to deal with is quinoa, and uh, Q-U-I-N-O-A, and you might have pronounced that quinoa or something like that. <laughs> I used to. And uh, it's all right. Now, th this is what it's like. It's actually a seed from a large herb in the high country in South America. And uh, it, it really is a delicious thing to add to food. And uh, th th it's a very simple thing, too, because all you have to do is one cup of quinoa and two cups of boiling water. And if you simply pour that into the top like so, that's all you have to do. Bring it back to the boil, and eight to ten minutes later, it will look like this one over here, which I'll show you in a moment. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, um, to get this uh, pot on the go, uh, I just want to put a teaspoonful of oil in there. And, you know, the usual you know, start, which is to bung in uh, a large onion, and that's finely diced, just like the one I did earlier on. Okay, so that's just shoveled around there. And three cloves of garlic. Now, this is where you sort of, I, I don't know, this is, uh, I, like, I like this idea because it takes forever in a garlic press to do it. But that's got it there, and I can practice my, my karate swing. Actually, if you get some of the garlic onto it, you've got a double karate chop. You can sort of approach somebody with your karate thing, and they go like this. <laughs> All right, so, man. so just a little bit of the garlic, <laughs> then just crushed up and down into the top. So now you've got those two onions, and that, that although I, when I say sulfurous smell, don't get me wrong. That is the one of the most wonderful aromas, I think, in the whole kitchen. Good. Now, <clears throat> into this, uh, I just want to take a little beef and do this, uh, uh, show you what I've got here. <coughs> the first thing, this is bottom round. And bottom round is a very lean cut. Now, if you were going to buy this and you would buy a piece for, say, four people, you might buy a piece like this and roast it or braise it would be better. I'm going to take just eight ounces. So you see, we take a heavy reduction in terms of the amount of meat. All right. And this can be put into, and I always buy meat in a larger piece, by the way, and, and cut it up myself, and then either mince it or put it through a small processor like this one, and, um, and then just um, pulse it to get it into the mince. Now, other people make mince beef, and I think that's wonderful um, that they do. And, um, but in um, my case, I want to know what it is that I'm getting. I want to be able to look at that meat and see that it is very fine and doesn't have a lot of fat running through it. By the way, I take it very seriously, the kind of textural result I get there. About 20 pulses will actually do it. I want it. I don't want it overdone. I don't want it slushy. I want just a bit of texture in it because I want to feel it when it's cooking. Now, you see how that's coming now? Pan and, those, and, and the meat is just, um, well, the, meat, the onions are nicely browned. And the flavor and that oil that has come up from them, just put this away, you know, wash it up. And, uh, you know, if you've got one of the little hand ones, that's fine to do it with that. Now, stir it all in together so that you've got the, the heat from that pan is now going to cook this meat. It doesn't take much cooking at all. Very small quantity of meat, large quantity of the grain of the seed, in fact, in this case, is going to be added to it. So shovel it all around, and then take a tablespoonful of tomato paste, of the low-sodium one. Remember, on the, if, if you saw that one, this is called the Maillard principle. Stir that into the bottom, and that should start to darken the color of the eventual dish. The longer you can let this go, say about four or five minutes, will be just terrific. And incidentally, something that you can add to this from a color point of view is a little light sodium content, sodium uh, soy sauce. And you see, Zen Buddhists understood this because they didn't eat meat, but they, they missed somehow or wanted to have a flavor that ran through the whole dish. So you put that in as well with that tomato paste. It's a incredible base color for this one. All right, good. And then uh, onto this goes also the, the uh, red, the sweet red pepper. 
and chop that up in small pieces. And about this time, because we want you to be able to get all of that as a medley of flavors, give that about three or four minutes, you know, cooking round. Then take the quinoa. Now this is the quinoa when it is cooked. It's had this eight to 10 minutes cooking time. And it has the most wonderful sort of appearance. I'm gonna take a little bit of that one and show that to you on the tip of my finger there, see? It's like a rice grain, but it's just showing a little bit of the starch content. It has, it pops in the mouth. It has the most wonderful texture. And um, if you go to a, an average supermarket, you may not find it. How about a health food store? Um, or, you know, drop us a line if you must, and we'll try and find it for you, okay? Um, so just stir it all the way around. It's going to become one of the most important grains that there are, or seeds that there are, because it is such a wonderful protein content. So that's going well. Now, on top of this, we've got here some sweet corn, one cup of thawed sweet corn. And look at the colors now. Now, all we really need is green. So I've got two tablespoons full of cilantro and two tablespoons full of parsley. And stir this in. About this stage, I mean, when you're making this one, you're going to look down and say, oh, aroma, color, and texture. And it's all coming together. A little cumin seed, ground cumin seed, uh, one quarter teaspoonful of that. And to give it that kind of bite, which lurks up on your tonsils and says, hello, uh, this is two quarter teaspoonfuls of what I call the Creole torpedo. That's cayenne pepper. That gives it... Uh, when, when you've got food which hasn't got so much meat in it, and there's a lot of these grains, you've got to spark it. It's got to have bright notes in it. Okay, so then just one cup of stock hits the top, and that is just there for a very intriguing purpose. It's there just to heat up for a moment, and I'm going to take a... You're having fun. I'm having an enormously good time. I hope you are. Okay, uh, just a, a tablespoonful of arrowroot and just um, a couple of tablespoons full of ordinary water and stir that up and dump it in. And what will happen is that will gloss as though it has oil in it. Extraordinary. Now, here's a plate and I took four potatoes and mixed with those potatoes half a cup of buttermilk and just simply made enough of that in order to be able to pipe onto a plate so as to create a kind of nest um, of green potatoes with cilantro and parsley in them. All right, just fill in the little gaps. And with the buttermilk, it, it tastes wonderful and looks great. And it's a, it's a super thing to be able to have with that sort of food. Now, you see what's happened here? That's become glossy and colorful. So then you just take that up and slosh some of it outside the nest as always, sloppy cook. And <laughs> we'll put that to one side. Push it down underneath, you know, just like when you're cleaning the front room and under the carpet. There we go. And come on, I'll show you how it compares with a classic. Actually, a classic is a, a dish called Lindstrom, which is a marvelous dish if you actually know it. It's a good one. So that's what that looks like. It's very colorful. Now, this dish is, uh, is with ground beef and potatoes and little cream and beets in it. Great dish. And that saturated dish um, with, with the full amount of the meat in it, and it comes out at 407 calories, you see. And uh, in this case, um, what we've got here is 406 calories. Why all the trouble, you say? Ah, watch it. See, 30 grams of fat is now down to 5 grams of fat. And 14 grams of saturated fat with Lindstrom down to only one. Now, you see, 66% calories from fat is now down to 11%. So if you're worried about fat, this is clears a worry right out. 49 milligrams of cholesterol right down, you see. Sodium up a bit because we got that light um, soy sauce, which is carrying flavor. Dietary fiber at six, so we've actually got the fiber bit up, which is wonderful. Okay, remember that when you cut the meat down, you also need to get the vegetables up to be able to make that combination. What, what an incredible dish. Ah, it's got that good smell. That's the cumin, I can smell it. Oh, hello, tonsils. Hello, tonsils. There's, there's that wonderful little 
patch there with that Creole torpedo there. It's got color and everything. Great. Anyway, if you want to minimize the risk for those you care for and maximize the flavor with aroma, color, and texture because you want to please people, that's one of them. Okay, thanks for being with me once again. God bless you. Lots of love. Bye.